Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Southern Gal True Crime. I share missing persons, cold cases, uh, true crime news, and more. And this week for our spotlight case, I wanted to share a little Zayla Walker. Uh, Zayla was last seen in North Las Vegas, Nevada on August 22nd, 2018. And at the time that she disappeared, she was living with her mother, uh, Lakia Walker, and her maternal grandmother, Carla Robinson. So just the basic information on little Zayla, she went missing on uh, August 22nd, 2018 from North, La North Las Vegas, Nevada. She is classified as endangered missing. Uh, she's a black female. She was just two years old at the time she disappeared. Uh, she was around two foot tall and 27 pounds. She was last seen wearing pajamas um, and thin gold chain bracelet with a dangling uh, end. She was carrying a stuffed tiger. Um, I was going to include, they did have a picture of the bracelet, and I forgot to include it on the slide, um, and a picture of the little stuffed tiger. Um, but she has black hair, brown eyes, her ears are pierced, and her nickname is Zay. So that is the basic information on Zayla. And I will give you a quick timeline uh, or things that have had a uh, Things that have happened and all this information came from the Charlie Project and I, I will put a link to it in the description box. So as I said, Zayla was last seen in, <clears throat> excuse me, North Las Vegas, Nevada on August 22nd, 2018. She lived, lived with her mother, Lakia Walker, and her maternal grandmother, Carla Richardson. And this was in the 4700 block of Mission Cantina Avenue um, at the time of her disappearance. Now, Richardson, uh, her grandmother, reported Lakia, Zayla, and Zayla's father, Ricky Beasley, missing, all, all three missing, on October 25th. So by that time, uh, Zayla's grandmother had not seen Zayla in nearly two weeks. Uh, Lakia had left Zayla with uh, Beasley, her father, you can see there on the slide. Um, on August 15th, while she went on a job interview, and Beasley refused to return Zayla back to her. Lakia did call 911 to try to get Zayla back. She begged Beasley and text messages and to return Zayla, but Zayla was not returned to her. And Beasley said that he would only give Zayla back if Lakia paid him $13,000, and Lakia promised to try to raise the money. During that time period, Lakia told her mother that Beasley had taken Zayla to California to visit a relative. And a Richardson last saw her daughter when she left in a hurry on August 22nd, saying, I will be right back. So uh, the mother, Lakia, told her mother that uh, Beasley, the father, I taken uh, Zayla to California to visit a relative, and then all of a sudden, on August 22nd, she left in a hurry, saying, I'll be right back. And that was it. So according to uh, Lakia's mother, or no, according to Beasley's mother, uh, late on August 21st, she heard a loud thud coming from his bedroom that woke her up. She ran into the hallway. She saw Beasley carrying Zayla, who was crying. Beasley said that he had gotten angry and thrown a cot against the wall after Zayla had apparently allegedly wet herself in the bed. It says he took her into the bathroom to clean her off, and the next day, Zayla and her parents, both of her parents, uh, disappeared. Uh, the couple went on an unannounced trip red flag for me there, leaving behind, uh, they left behind their cell phones, Lakia's wallet, and her car. And during their trip up and down the state of California, and then across, and then uh, east across the country, uh, they passed through Mexico, Texas, Illinois, West Virginia, and Tennessee. Lakia later stated uh, they slept in the car at highway rest stops and never stayed in one place for very long. Now, I don't know about you guys, um, chat is up during this video premiere, so definitely let me know what you guys think about this in chat, and if you're watching replay, please uh, do leave a comment, because I have some very uh, 
lot of a lot of questions and a lot of uh, concerns, obviously, over this case. Switch that so you guys can see that better. All right. So on November seventeenth, Lakia and Beasley were detained in Houston, Texas. Um, when police ran their names at a traffic stop and learned that they, that they and their daughter had been reported missing by um, Lakia's mother. Uh, Zayla was not with them at the time. Uh, both her parents and both their parents said that they had not seen her in several months. So they leave. The last time she was, that Zayla was seen, credible information was with the father and then going back to the mother Zakia or uh yeah Zakia saying she left in a hurry he told her mother I'm you know I'll, I'll be right back they make this cross-country trip they get stopped um ran their names notice they were all three reported missing Zayla was not with them at that time and they told the police uh that they had not seen Zayla in several months so Lakia initially said that Zayla was staying with Beasley's relatives. Don't know how true that is or not. And Lakia was released after 48 hours, but Beasley, uh, the father, was booked uh, for possession of a stolen vehicle. He was driving his mother's car, which he had taken uh, without permission. Now Beasley and Lakia <clears throat> did return to North Las Vegas after getting out of jail in Texas. And they were detained by police there in December. Lakia was uh, ultimately, rele ultimately released, but Beasley was arrested again, again on the stolen vehicle charge. Uh, he subsequently pleaded on charges of first degree, child harm, neglect, and kidnapping in Zayla's disappearance. The police did interview Lakia several times, and she did fail a polygraph test. Now, keep in mind, uh, we all know polygraph tests aren't that reliable, um, but and they, they're definitely not admissible in court, but a lot of times law enforcement will just use them to kind of get an idea of maybe which direction to look in and who to look at. Uh, she claimed that Zayla, so the mother now claims that Zayla was with various other people, including Beasley's ex-girlfriend his brother and his mother. So now we have differing stories. First, uh, Beasley said that he was with some of his family, um, maybe just his mother. Um, now they're saying that uh, Zayla was with the ex-girlfriend, uh, his brother and his mother. And so this information that she provided, quote, led detectives to believe that Zayla was no longer alive, unfortunately. Uh, Beasley's story to police did change multiple times as well, another red flag. At one point, he said Zayla was with Lakia, and another time, he said that she was with his own mother. And in a phone conversation with Beasley while he was in jail, uh, Lakia said, quote, you always say nobody, no crime. So to me, that is, I mean, why would a mother make that statement about her missing child unless she knew, I'm not saying, Unless she allegedly knew that something had happened to uh, uh, Zayla, and she knew po allegedly, possibly knew what happened, possibly allegedly might have had something to do with it, or at the very least, helped cover it up. This is just my opinion. So a check of the couple's phone records, uh, which they, uh, phones which they left behind in North Las Vegas, showed that Beasley had performed Google searches. Here we go again with the Google searches on August 21st about how to stop seizures in children, including whether uh, Mary Jane would help. And he went to a, a dispensary that day and uh, made a purchase. So. In my mind, I'm starting to put together my scenario of what possibly could have happened, just in my opinion. But once again, please let me know what you guys think. 
Um, investigators were able to confirm that no one in Zayla's mother's or father's family ever had custody of her after her disappearance in August and that her parents uh, never reached out to anyone about her. Investigators believe that Zayla may have suffered a, some kind of traumatic injury at the time of her disappearance and passed away as a result and that her parents disposed of her body and then went on the run. Now, whether or not they did something to cause her passing or like i said it was a uh, some kind of a medical emergency they mentioned that he to me the telling thing is that he made the search for what to do when a child has a seizure and if the mary jane could help stop a seizure so one scenario that i you know is that possibly she did have a seizure they didn't know what to do um it's, they should have called 911 and have her, of course, taken to the hospital to be treated. But for some reason or another, maybe they, you know, didn't want to do that, couldn't do that. Maybe, you know, um, apparently he had warrants, I think it said. So he did this search. Um, will Mary Jane stop seizures? Possibly she had a seizure or, or ha was having seizures. He did this Google search. She went to the dispensary. Maybe they gave her allegedly, possibly, once again, my opinion, my speculation or scenario, gave her some uh, substance and she passed away from that. So Lakia had begged to be with Zayla after uh, Beasley, uh, the father, took her in mid-August and refused to return her. But after August 23rd, she suddenly stopped showing any concern about her daughter's whereabouts or well-being. Another big red flag, obviously very telling. In my opinion, that would lead me to believe that after August 23rd, that's when something happened to um, Zayla. She was no longer alive. Her mother knew this. So she just, like I said, stopped showing any concern um, about her uh, daughter's whereabouts or well-being. She did, she did not even try to call or text Zayla on Zayla's birthday or send her a card or a present. So although Beasley's mother, the father's mother, stated that she normally to, uh, kept her car clean, Lakia told police that while she and Beasley were traveling around the country after Zayla's disappearance, um, apparently there was what they call a terrible smell coming from the car's trunk. What okay, cases so that remind us of? Um, and it quote smelled uh, like rotten meat. Uh, she and Beasley tried to get rid of the odor by vacuuming the trunk and cleaning it with lemon scented ammonia. Police stated that the odor Lakia described is is consistent with decaying human remains. So never never a good sign um, when things like that happen. In March of 2019, Beasley, who was still in jail on the other charge, uh, charges, was charged with the homicide in Lakia's disappearance, or in Zayla's disappearance, and Lakia was arrested on the same charges. After her arrest, she asked police, quote, so you're telling me that you found Zayla. Once again, another very, in my opinion, another very telling statement. Um, we have after the 23rd, the mother uh, didn't seem concerned about her daughter's whereabouts or well-being, didn't send her birthday cards. And then she's at, you know, after she was arrested, she said, uh, so you're telling me that you found Zayla. So that tells me, in my opinion, something definitely did happen to Zayla, unfortunately, and she's no longer alive. They possibly disposed, uh, most likely, possibly, allegedly disposed of her body somewhere. And it's just a sad, horrible situation. So as of uh, the writing of this Charlie project, the couple, uh, Lakia and uh, Beasley, uh, are awaiting trial for the homicide. Authorities do not know the whereabouts of Zayla's body. Foul play obviously is suspected in her case due to circumstances. And so if you have any information regarding Zayla, her possible whereabouts, um, if you may have seen something, if you see something, say something, if you know something, say something, um, please call the North Las Vegas Police Department 
at 702-633-9111. And now I have about, um, I found a couple of clips. The, um, the first part of it is about a four minute clip I'm gonna play. Um, the first part of it is an interview with Zayla's grandmother, um, Ms. Richardson that talked about um, and the information. And then just the last maybe minute or so is when the parents uh, were charged, uh, arrested and charged. So I'll play that for you and be right back. Later. Absolutely. We have more breaking news tonight, though. After nearly eight months of investigating the disappearance of a North Las Vegas toddler, her parents are now charged with her murder. Well, in August, three-year-old Zayla Walker was reported missing from a home right near East Lone Mountain and Fifth Street. And 13 Action News anchor Carla Wade joins us now with more on this other breaking news story tonight, Carla. Yeah, Todd and Trisha, Ricky Beasley and Lakia Walker, both of them 27, are now in the Clark County Detention Center. Zayla's father was already there on separate charges. Now he and her mother are both charged in her death. This has been a lengthy investigation with many twists and turns since last summer when then two-year-old Zayla was first reported missing in August. An investigation found she was last seen with her parents, Ricky Beasley and Lakia Walker. Detectives then placed the family's names into a national missing persons database. In November, Ricky Beasley and Lakia Walker were detained in Texas and then released. Then in December, her parents were spotted at the Lucky Club Casino. Beasley was taken into custody and Walker was released for cooperating with investigators. Both insisted for months the toddler was in the care of relatives. But a witness told police the last time anyone saw Zayla was August 21st when Beasley became angry after the little girl wet her pants when he was watching her. Investigators say numerous interviews with Zayla's mother led them to believe the child was not alive, including a failed lie detector test. They say Lakia also volunteered that the trunk of a vehicle reeked like rotten meat and that she and Ricky cleaned the trunk by vacuuming and using lemon scented ammonia to rid the trunk of the stench. And police also say that Zayla's mother said that the little girl was complicating her relationship with the child's father. Detectives believe Zayla suffered an unknown traumatic health-related injury. Trisha. Carla, thank you. Okay, that, were, uh, that was just a couple of video clips that I put together. Um, <clears throat> watching that interview um, with the grandmother just breaks my heart oh goodness breaks my heart um i feel so bad um for obviously for little zayla she definitely needs to be found best case scenario she's alive and well somewhere but i always try to hope for the best but unfortunately i don't think that's going to be the case with zayla's uh story and and i thought another thing that interesting thing that i mentioned in that the last part of that video clip was that um, Zayla's mother had mentioned that Zayla was complicating her relationship with Beasley. You know, just my opinion, but any mother who would put a man above her child, I just uh, trying to be trying to be nice here, but that's to me that is just not right. Um, but at any rate, we uh, little Zayla, regardless if she's still alive or not, she needs to be found, brought back to her family, to her grandmother, the rest of her family, so she can be laid to rest properly. Her family can get some kind of closure. And I did look for updates uh, to see if their uh, the parents were arrested and charged, as you heard in the video clip. Um, I did, could not find any inform current information of uh, if they've gone to trial, if they made a, a plea deal, or but I will keep looking. If I find any information regarding that, I will bring it to you. Um, but once again, little Zayla Walker, uh, missing since 
August 23rd, 2018. She was just two years old when she went missing from North Las Vegas, Nevada. She's a black female at the time she disappeared, two foot tall, 27 pounds, a medium complexion, brown hair and brown eyes. So, uh, says so she may have traveled to Texas or into Mexico with her parent, with her parents after the date of last contact. And authorities believe foul play is suspected uh, by her parents uh, due to circumstances involved. So once again, if you have any information regarding uh, Zayla's case, please contact the North, North Las Vegas Police Department at 702-633-1173. So thanks for watching, guys, and please give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Uh, leave a comment. The most important thing you can do is share this um, anywhere and everywhere that you can to uh, get this information out to as many people as possible to help do our little part here to help bring some uh, closure or maybe jog somebody's memory um, to call in to uh, say something um, to help bring uh, little Zayla home. So until next time, um, take care of yourselves. Um, take care of yourselves. Be careful out there. Take care of each other. That's the most important thing we'll do. Uh, we can do is take care of a fellow human being. Um, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.